Hi and welcome to the first in a series of videos about my recent Butsu Dan build. Now this was a hand tool only build but I'm going to be including some options for you uh, showing how power tools could be used as well. So hopefully everyone's going to enjoy it. So my client sent me some pictures of the sort of thing she was after and I did some, some preliminary sketches, worked out some of the material requirements for them and some prices and then uh, stuck it on the computer made some drawings up of the sort of idea um, that I had and gave some options for handles and detailing of the base and the, of the top it's very handy that you can uh, render very quickly some 3D images and uh, let them see what it is you've got in your mind to see whether it matches what they've got in their mind and uh, when she decided that uh, she was happy then I could think about getting the wood the clients requested a relatively plain uh, European oak for her Busudan and um, I've just gone through and looked at what I had in uh, indoors acclimated and ready to work on and there wasn't uh, there wasn't enough. Unfortunately at the moment um, I'm suffering with my back and I can't drive more than about five minutes without being in agony so I've had to order some online and uh, I received a couple of boards um, and well you can see this is uh, got some pippy oak in there which is not great for uh, this particular project. This was the second board which is a little better and I managed cutting from this one and from the other one and from what I already had in the house uh, to be able to get enough stock. Ordinarily I'd go to the timber yard and select uh, all the material I wanted, bring it home and acclimate it for a few months before working on it. But uh, this was a project that I could get done quickly mostly with what I had uh, in stock and just buying an another couple of pieces but it does show you that when you buy online you don't always get what you're expecting and there's some nice wood in here that I'll be able to use for other projects if uh, people want something with a bit more character in it now a major reason for uh, keeping the boards indoors as I do is so that we can keep the moisture content at a good working level that's about 8.7 now the wood that I've actually bought in um, is kiln dried and it's uh, reading 7.9 7 moisture content so that's a little bit lower um, I'll get them sitting together I'll mix the pieces um, sort of sandwich them between each other with some sticks in there and uh, leave it for about a week before I do any work on it and hopefully they'll come a little bit closer together Breaking the boards down with hand saws was uh, really easy, although I did take my time because of my back. Plugged in woodworkers might like to use a jigsaw, circular saw, band saw or table saw. After a suitable rest for myself and the components, I set about squaring them all round, starting off by flattening and as you can see here I'm using my business card technique uh, just to take a slight bow out of the boards each face side deserves a face edge and I prepare that whilst also smoothing. Plugged in woodworkers could use a jointer to flatten and prepare a face side and face edge but in my experience there's nothing that beats a hand plane for a smooth finish. Thank you. 
bringing to thickness and width is a piece of cake and dare I even say pleasurable with the number 8? Plugged in users, you can go to your thicknesser. With one end shot square, we can measure for, mark, saw and shoot the other end to length. Next time, getting groovy and laying out for dovetails. Cheerio! If you like my videos, please share them with friends and on social media and check out my supporters page.